always truly in that position that you are completely insufficient of yourself. That your sufficiency comes all from God. When you get in that position, that's when God's overflow is going to flow through your life and those around you. That's when God's going to, when you realize you are that desperate at all times, that you need, you're not that desperate. You, when you realize that, when you realize that you need God that much, he's going to overflow through you. You understand, brothers and sisters, he's always, now and then you can walk and be at rest and in and, and, and the faith, but you've got to realize that I am desperately broken. I'm desperately in this world without nothing. I need Jesus always. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, so we're going to read something this morning. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. It says, so Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he made the water wine. And there was a certain nobleman, a certain nobleman, a nobleman. Uh, 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 he was a he was a good man. He done good things, you know. Noble man. He was a good man. So that's basically what a noble man is. They just done good things, you know. But the noble man and whose son was sick at Capernaum, his son was sick in another town. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him. He went all the way up there to, and besought him and chased him down. He, he wasn't chasing down the hospitals. He was chasing down Jesus because there was no other way. He, he, he tried the hospitals, I'm sure. Hallelujah. Because watch this. It says, and he chased him down, went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. His son was at the point of death. He was desperate. The, 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 the doctors couldn't help. They couldn't make no explanation for it. He was at he was at the point of death. Obviously, this is a rich man, this noble man. Obviously, he has you know he, he, he you can tell that he he's he's got it. He's got it made. You understand? In a way, y'all can just see that he has it made. You understand? But 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 he was desperate. He got put in a desperate situation. He might not be rich, but he was he had it made where he could just leave and and he would do everything to help his son. You understand? Hallelujah. So, but he was in a desperate situation that his son, he, he didn't have nowhere else to look to and he loved his son and, 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 and he went everywhere and he was in a desperate situation. He realized that he was helpless. Oh, that's the key. Oh, that's the key. He realized he was helpless. There was nowhere else to look to. He realized that. And brothers and sisters, every time any one of us came to Jesus, you realized you were helpless. You were tired of your life. You realized that that was not doing you no good. You were tired of it. It, it. it brought you to a point so many times you just got tired of it. And you said, finally, Lord, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you, Jesus. Come into my heart, Lord. Lord, change me today. Oh, do you have somebody in your family right now that you are desperate for? to be delivered? Do you have somebody that you know that, that you are desperate for them to be delivered? That you are desperate? You're tired? You, 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 you prayed and you don't know what to do? Well, I want to tell you, you got to pray. Some, uh, we're going we're gonna to go to this right here. Watch this. And when he heard that, I want to give you encouragement from this. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son. For he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said, Jesus said unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. See, he besought him to come on down. To come down there. He wanted him to come down. So he was wanting Jesus to come down there, right? You understand? Because he felt like Jesus had to be there. He wanted to see the sign. He says, Except ye see signs and wonders, Ye will not believe. And this provoked the noble man into a desperate state. Because he really wanted it. He really wanted it. He would do anything for his son. You understand? He really, he was to the point where he was so desperate to do anything for his son. You understand? And he felt like Jesus had to be there. And, and, and from the from the from the scripture, it seems like he he felt like Jesus had to be there. And Jesus said, Except ye, ye he didn't he didn't heal him off rip. You see, Jesus didn't heal him off rip, right? He didn't heal him from the beginning, but he provoked him to a desperate state. Watch this. It provoked him to desperacy when Jesus told him, except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And the nobleman said unto him, sir, come down here. My child die. Jesus said to him, go thy way. Thy son liveth. 
And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoke unto him. And he went his way. He didn't make no questions. He believed the words that he said. You understand? He believed them right then and there. Well, I'm telling you today, do you believe Jesus' words today? If you ask, you shall receive, especially if it's according to his will and purpose. You understand? Hallelujah. If you ask on point out of love for someone else, hallelujah, then you shall receive. Do you believe that today? Hallelujah. Well, I want to tell you right now in the mighty name of Jesus, all the, the people, the person that's been on your heart the most right now that you've been crying out and desperately for to be delivered and to be transformed. They're being healed and they're being transformed. They're going to be delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to rest in that knowing God's going to deliver them. Uh, this man did not, he didn't question it. Rest in it. Knowing that they're going to be delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today they're gonna they're they're going to be delivered. That person you've been crying for, that child you've been crying for, that person you've been crying out for, that brother, that sister, that 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 mother, that father that you've been crying out for. They're gonna be delivered. Rest in it, knowing it. Thank God for it. Go ahead and thank him for it. Hallelujah. Right here, what did Jesus say, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. It says he believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. And every time the devil tries to put in your mind fear or doubt, you confess right here. You confess. You confess that Jesus already told me I can rest. Go thy way. He's going to live. Go thy way. She's going to live. Go thy way. They're going to be redeemed. Go thy way. They're going to get their deliverance. Go thy way. Remember that. What Jesus said by his words. Go thy way. They're going to get it. Hallelujah. So you go out there and you just keep proclaiming. Every time the devil says it, Jesus said, go thy way. He's being delivered. Go thy way. It don't mean it's going to happen today. It could. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. It can happen today now. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But it's going to happen. Hallelujah. And all you got to remember is the word of God. Go thy way. They're healed. They liveth. And the only, hallelujah, go thy way, there liveth. And every time the devil tries to say any doubt in your mind, go thy way, they liveth. Thank you, Jesus. So every time you come to pray for them, you pray for healing in their life or whatever, go thy way, he liveth, they liveth, she liveth. Thank you, Jesus, for already working in them. Hallelujah. I needed that word today. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. That was a word for all of us, brothers and sisters. And that was from Jesus because I needed that today. You understand? I needed to hear that today, and I'm thankful for it. Glory be to God. I needed to hear that today. Go thy way. They liveth. Hallelujah. Go thy way. They liveth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. I thought that was the story of... Uh, 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 um, Believe, help my unbelief, but hey, hallelujah, go thy way today. If you're de Have you been desperate for this person to be delivered? Go thy way, they liveth. I bet there's someone watching right now that's been desperate. There's some people watching right now that's been desperate for someone around them to be delivered, to be set free. Hallelujah. Go thy way, they liveth. Remember that. Remember that every time the doubt comes to your mind. Go thy way, they liveth. You understand? Be thankful to God. Thank you, Jesus, already, Lord God. Thank you today, Lord God. We believe you, Lord Jesus. We're going to rest in that promise. Go thy way, they liveth. We've been desperate for this situation, but we know that they liveth because you said they will. You said they will be redeemed. You said they will be healed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Go thy way, they liveth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. Rest in that every time the struggle comes to your mind. Rest in this every time the doubt comes in your mind. Go thy way. They liveth. They're being redeemed. They're being healed. They got a time appointed for them for the angel of the Lord to come in like Peter, like they did upon Peter, and break the chains up, up off of them. Hallelujah. And slap them on the thigh and wake them up and make them stand up and raise them up and then show them what to do. Hallelujah. And show them. It says the anointing, hallelujah, will teach them all things. Hallelujah. It's going to be so powerful. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. It's going to be so powerful. I want you to not be doubtful no more. You go thy way, they liveth. 
Go that way. That's a word from the Lord. I got to do the same thing. So every time that doubt tries to come, you just thank God for he said, go thy way. They liveth. Uh, go thy way. I thank you, Lord Jesus. They're liveth. You mean to tell you something? That's faith. That's resting in promises. That's faith. Because every time the doubt tries to come in, Jesus said otherwise. He said, go thy way, they live it. Hallelujah. They're coming to, hey, I want to tell you something today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you something today. Go thy way, they live it. Hallelujah. I got to remember that one. Praise God. Glory be to God today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We walk by faith. Hallelujah. Against hope. I want to show you another one real quick before we get off of here. We're going to go to Romans chapter Chapter 4, Romans chapter 4 real quick, brothers and sisters. I'm going to give you one. Hallelujah. We've done this before, but I want to show you something. There is a faith. We're going to learn what faith is real quick. Romans chapter 4, there is a faith in a verse 16. I'm going to start in verse 16. Romans chapter 4, verse 16. I'm going to start there real quick. There's some good stuff right here that really helped me a lot, you know, and I want to, I want to show you this. So, we already know that the Lord's words is go thy way, they liveth. That's what he said. Go thy way, they liveth. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. They liveth. They're going to be redeemed. They're going to be healed. And I'm thankful, Lord God. I rest in that. I thank you, Jesus. And let me show you something that's going to make that happen, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Because God's going to make it happen. Hallelujah. He said it. He spoke it. I believe it. You better believe it. If that word's for you today, it's going to happen. I'm telling you now, if you're believing that word today, then it's happening for you. It's already in the making. Hallelujah. It's already transforming. It's already happened. Watch this. Let me show you something. You mean to tell you why? It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only. So we're going to go down here. It says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. He believed that. Watch this. Before him who he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which. Now check this out. He quickeneth the dead and calleth those things which be as though they were. Call it those things which be not as though they were. Whoa, hold on. What is that saying right there? God, you see what Jesus did? The son was sick. The son was at the point of death. The son looked like it had no hope. But somebody loved that son enough to come reach out to the one that could do it. And they believed, they were so desperate to the point that they believed the words that he spoke. Thy son liveth. And he didn't doubt it. He didn't doubt it. He went his way and believed every, every spoken word that he said. You understand? Hallelujah. Thy son liveth. Thy son liveth. I believe that. And he went his way. He didn't doubt it. He rested and went back. Now, we can read the rest of that story. The rest of that story is beautiful. And it will show you that he just, he went on back and they met him. He found out at the same hour Jesus spoke those words. It happened. Hallelujah. But 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 we're going to keep going, brothers and sisters. Remember that. Hallelujah. So watch what Abraham did. Watch what Abraham did as he was waiting on God's words to come to pass. See, God, see, Abraham, watch this. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, calleth those things which be not. He calls those things that don't, we look at it and it don't look that way. They look like they're lost. They look like they're gone. They look like they're on drugs. They look like there's no way out for them. There's no way. But God calls those things. Look, you should have seen me. <laughs> you would have seen me. Brother John, go look at my old Facebook and look at me. See the difference. Evil. Straight evil. You can see it. On my face, on those things, you can see the evil upon me. You understand? Hallelujah. But I'm going to tell you something. You can see what God can do. You understand, brothers and sisters? So he calls those things which be not as though they were. See, he knew me before I was even come to Christ. He knew, brothers and sisters. Now watch this, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. It says, who against hope believed in hope, brothers and sisters? That he might become the father of many nations. Who against hope? It looked to the eyes like there was no hope for that person. It looked to the, well, in this situation, it looked, it looked like to the eyes there was no hope for them. Sarah was beyond, beyond, she was 90 something years old. She laughed at when she heard that he was still going to be a father of many nations. She, 
She was doubtful, but 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 she kept on it. She was still a even though she laughed, she still believed though. She she still believed. You understand? She still believed it because she she got quiet. She was afraid. She still believed God's word. You understand? Even though that she she laughed at God's word. I'm gonna have a baby. Oh me? Oh yeah, really? And she kind of laughed at it, and and she was afraid, but she believed. You understand? She still believed. She just laughed. She was, and, and, and she had some kind of unbelief in her, but, but it still says in the Bible that she believed. Do you understand? So right here it says, it says, who against hope believed in hope? See, it's, see, God, see, Abraham was going to take it to his grave that God said it, it's coming to pass. You understand? Abraham was willing to take it all the way to the grave. God said it. He's been faithful to me. He said it, I believe it. He spoke it, I believe it, even though I'm old. Even though this person's gone on drugs and lost, and or this person's gone out there in the streets or whatever. Even if they're homeless, running around, and they're completely lost it. They don't look like there's no hope for them. Hallelujah. We're going to believe for them. Hallelujah. Praise God. Because Abraham believed, brothers and sisters. He might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith. This is what he did. As an example of his faith, he had substance. This is the substance because he had faith. Watch this. See, there's a substance. There's an evidence of your faith regardless. <laughs> if you say you got faith and there's no substance, there's no evidence, then you really don't have faith. You don't at all. There's no faith in you. A lot of people, they say they believe in Jesus, the finished work of the cross. I understand that. You understand? But he was raised from the dead too. And he and he's coming back. What's your faith in? Is it in Jesus? Well, he spoke and said, I'm coming back. You understand? Are you waiting on Jesus? Because he said he's coming back. Well, if you're not waiting on him and looking for him to come back and you don't believe in that promise, then you might need to reevaluate your faith and, 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 and so you can grow in the scriptures. Trust the word of God. Don't trust what every man says. A lot of vain people out here, they say, hey, I, I got faith in the finished work of that. We know that Jesus died on the cross for us to be made right with God. But he was also raised from the dead for our justification. And he's also coming back to return to get us. So he still got some stuff to do in us. You understand? Hallelujah. He still got some stuff to do for us. Hallelujah. And he's going to do it, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. He's coming back to get us. And we rejoice in that hope of glory. I want to tell you that today. But right now, God's got me on a certain situation because I need this word too. And I'm thankful. Hallelujah. So I want to tell you that today. Substance has. Substance of things hoped for. Hallelujah. And this is. Okay. Okay. That's right. Yes. Yes. Now watch this, James. Brother James, I want you to see this. I'm glad you wrote that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So what's his substance? Watch this. What's his substance right here? And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. He walked as if it was going to happen because he believed God's promise. Every step he took uh, uh, represent the evidence of what he was hoping for. You understand? It was evidence of what his what he what he didn't see. Now, everybody else looked at him like he was crazy. You understand? I'm sure, just like Noah, his uh, j j God said he's going to flood the earth, and Noah said, "Hey, I'm building the ark." He had evidence of what he hoped for. You understand God's promise, hallelujah. He had evidence of his faith, brothers and sisters. If you don't have evidence and substance of your faith, then you are not in the faith. You're erring from the faith. You can sit here and say, hey, I got faith in this and live like the world, then your faith is not in that. You understand you're vain. Your faith is vain. It's void. It's, 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 it's dead. You understand? But if you have faith in Christ, it's going to be evident. The things that come out of your mouth are going to be he's returning or going to be he died on the cross or going to be he resurrected or going to be the doctrine, the sound doctrine or going to be, hey, Lord, thank you, Jesus, or a thankfulness, holiness, godly conversations. Hallelujah. That's the evidence of your faith. If you don't have substance, then your faith is void. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I don't care who you are. This is not a debate. I love you, brothers and sisters, but it's the truth. You understand? 
So he had substance. He was giving glory to God. He didn't think it was, I'm sure that people around him were like, okay, you're going to be, you know, and he just kept going. He just, it didn't matter what his wife thought. It didn't matter what nobody else thought. He believed the word of God. You understand? But his wife respected him. You understand? Respected him. She understood the divine nature. She understood the divine nature of God. You understand? Because God was on him. <laughs> when you got that majesty of God upon you, like Abraham had brothers and sisters, then, then it's in your household. You understand? When you got the majesty of Christ upon you, brothers and sisters, his majesty walking with you and with you as he is, so are we in this world. When you're walking in that mad, in his presence, because as we are, so is he in this world, then those in your household, are going to know God is with you. You understand? Hallelujah. They're going to know that God is upon you. They're going to know it if they stick around it long enough. If you're not compromising, they stick around it long enough. They're going to know it. If they can't see it, it's a, it's, it's a tough situation, brothers and sisters. I can't go no further than that. Hallelujah. Praise God. But anyways, hallelujah. We're going to keep going. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead. And when he was, see, he didn't consider his own body now dead. He didn't consider that that, that, that just because he struggled, you struggled with something that, that God ain't going to deliver you completely from it. You, you, don't, you don't consider that, 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 that just because you made a mistake that God ain't going to finish what he started in you. You don't consider that, hallelujah. You don't consider that, 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 that Jesus ain't going to come back. Like he said he was going to come back just because it's, it's, it's taking long. Hallelujah. You know he's coming back. You know why? Because God promised it. Hallelujah. And when he promises something, he means it, right? We don't stagger at the promise. So what do we do? We stand in the grace of God and we hope in the glory. Hallelujah. And we rejoice in the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. I, I know I'm going through different little sections here. We rejoice in the hope of glory. What does is, what is Romans chapter 5 say? We stand in the grace... Uh, Right here it says, uh, verse 2, it says, By whom we also have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of glory. We, what's the substance? We stand in the hope of, we rejoice in the hope of this glory. What is the hope of glory? That Jesus is going to return? We're going to be swallowed up by life. That we have an eternal place. That we have an eternal home in heaven. That's the hope of glory, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the hope of glory, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's the hope of glory. Anyways, so right here it says, and, 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 and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. And when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise get through uh, of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God. So even when it's against hope, even when it's against the eyes, when it's against the natural mind, if God promised it for your healing. If God promised it for for his, for your for him coming back, if he promised it and you stagger not at the promise, rejoice no matter what. If people laughing, I'm getting my healing. No matter what, you're in a wheelchair, your your back's bent over backwards. I'm getting my healing. The Lord said it. He promised it. Hallelujah. I believe that promise is for me. You rest in it. You rejoice in it. Guess what? Uh, even though they laughed at Abraham, uh, even though they laughed at uh, uh, Sarah, even though they laughed at them, Hallelujah. I'm sure they did. But he rejoiced and staggered not at the promise, and he rejoiced even though it was even though. Sarah laughed at Abraham, hallelujah. She got in line quick though, but I'm going to tell you, even though she laughed at Abraham, hallelujah, she looked at him and, and, and even though she laughed at God, hallelujah, oh, he's going to make me have a baby at this age. It lets you know that, 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 that even though all these things happen, Abraham staggered not at the promise in unbelief. He rejoiced in what God's spoken word. That man that, that, that got a healing for his son, Right there, and, and the one that we just read, the one that got his healing for his son, he staggered not at the promise, did he? When Jesus told him, your son, heal, go thy way, what happened right there? What happened right there, brothers and sisters? What happened? What happened when he staggered? He, he, he went that way and he believed. And what happened to his son? Hallelujah. What happened to his son? What happened to his son? He was healed, wasn't he? In the same hour, he staggered not at the promise. 
He went his way when Jesus spoke that word to him and said, your son liveth. He went his way and he went and he staggered not at the promise. You understand? God's got many promises today for you, brothers and sisters. And if you believe and you're, if you're desperate for somebody to be healed, if you're desperate for somebody, we know we rejoice in the hope of glory to the end, brothers and sisters. We know this. But if you're desperate for somebody to be healed, God's promise to be delivered, to be redeemed. I believe today he's trying to say to somebody right now, you rejoice. You do not you do not struggle with that promise. You rest in that promise. Every time doubt comes to your mind about it, rejoice in God that he said it. This is your promise, just like Abraham did. He stat no matter what, if they laugh, my son's getting delivered. If, if they laugh, my daughter's getting delivered. If they laugh, my kid's getting delivered. If they laugh, I don't care. He's getting delivered. He looks like that, but he's getting delivered in the mighty name of Jesus. He's going to get redeemed. Hallelujah. She's going to get redeemed in the mighty name of Jesus. They're going to get redeemed. I don't care who you are. If you rejoice in the hope when it's against your eyes, then it's going to happen for you, brothers and sisters. Don't you doubt it. Don't you doubt it, brothers and sisters. Don't you doubt it. Because then you're doubting God's promise. You understand? Hallelujah. Lord, help our unbelief today. Hallelujah. 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 I believe. Lord, help my unbelief today. Hallelujah. They're going to get their redemption today. They're going to get their... Oh, if they're going to get it. If you believe that today, then they're going to get it. Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe they're going to get it. His son was healed. Amen, amen, amen. They're going to get their healing today. Hallelujah. Praise God in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Don't let the devil be doubtful about that. Amen, amen. Yes, Lord, we rejoice in the hope. When eyes, when, when we can't see it, when it's against the hope, we're still going to rejoice today. Hallelujah. I believe. Help my unbelief. In Jesus' mighty name. I feel the Lord holding me up from doubt right now, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I feel the Lord holding me away from doubt right now. Glory be to God. It's like he's girding me on his side, keeping me away from doubt. He's keeping those doubtful thoughts away right now. Hallelujah. So he means it when he says it right now. Hallelujah. They're being healed right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rejoice in the hope of glory. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to God. I love you, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I pray y'all go and rejoice in the healing. I pray y'all go rejoice in knowing these things are coming to pass. I pray y'all rejoice in it. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Rejoice in it. Don't let no one give you doubt because it's God's promise. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do not let no one give you doubt. Don't stagger at the promises of God. Glory be to God. All his glory, okay? Hallelujah. Praise God today. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. That was for me today, too. I'm just thankful for it. We know we're going home to heaven, but there's other promises God can bring to pass. Hallelujah. If it's his promise and if we stagger not at it, hallelujah, we rejoice. Knowing it's going to come to pass, it's going to come to pass. We don't stagger at the at the promises. Hallelujah. We're just going to rejoice. We're going to rejoice in the hope of glory. We're going to rejoice in the promises that he said are going to come to pass for those around us, for the healing in our lives, for the healing in those lives around us. Hallelujah. For the, for the specific one that God has put on your heart today. For that specific one. It's, it, it, that's a promise for somebody. Hallelujah out there. For that specific one. When I started preaching this. That God has put on your heart today. Hallelujah. That's not just for me brothers and sisters. That was for me too. But that's for that one that you were that you have been praying desperately for to, to come to know Christ, to come to get healing, to come to be redeemed. I'm telling you right now they're being healed. I'm telling you right now they're being redeemed. I'm telling you right now that God has already got a plan ordained for them, that he's going to come in just like this. And I'm going to show you exactly how he's going to come in their life. I'm going to show you exactly how he's going to come into their life. I'm telling you right now, don't you stagger at it. I'm telling you exactly how he's going to come into their life. I'm going to show you right now. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. We're going to read it right now. Uh, we're going to go to Acts chapter. Acts chapter 12 real quick. And we're going to start at verse 5. Peter therefore was kept in prison. But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. And when Herod would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and the keepers before the door kept the prison. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and the light shined in the prison. 
And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison. And he smote Peter on the side and raised him up. You hear that? What did the angel of the Lord do to him? He was in a prison. They might be in a prison right now. But I'm telling you, the angel of the Lord is going to go in there them, himself. It ain't going to be nobody else. It's going to be God himself. is going to go in there and slap them on the thigh and raise them up out of that prison. What's going to happen to them right there? I'm going to tell you exactly what's going to happen to them, brothers and sisters. This is true. This is a promise. Hallelujah. This is going to happen. Hallelujah. This is going to happen for that one that God put on your heart you've been praying for. You're not praying for them for no reason. You haven't been crying tears for them for no reason. This ain't for everybody. This is for those who are ready to stagger, rest in this. Whoever it's for. Whoever this is for. You understand? This is for that one that believes, whoever believes right now. Whoever believes in this word. Whoever this is hitting home right now. This is going to happen for them. Keep praying for them. Don't you doubt that. The devil's a liar. Hallelujah. Doubt. You cannot please God with doubt. Only with faith. He don't move when you doubt. It's only when you believe and stagger. And stagger not at the promise. Don't waver in the faith. If you don't believe, then if, 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 if you're already staggering at this, tell the Lord to help your unbelief right now. Say, Lord, help my unbelief. Don't you stagger at this, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. This is exactly what he's going to do for this person. Keep praying for them. Keep crying out for them. Keep thanking God. Matter of fact, keep thanking God that he's going to deliver them. Hallelujah. Keep thanking God when you cry for them, that he's delivering them, that he's already going to go in there just like this. You keep crying. And when you cry out for them, cry out for them in thanksgiving to God, that Lord, you know my heart. I feel for them, but I know you're moving. I know that you're already doing it. I know that you're already doing it. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for already working. Help my unbelief and go in those prayers. Lord, I believe that you said you're going to deliver them. Help my unbelief. If you break down in tears, Lord, help my unbelief. Hallelujah. When you're breaking down in tears and praise him and rejoice and knowing that and, and that he's going to deliver them. He's going to deliver them. He's going to deliver them. No matter what you see. Hallelujah. He's going to deliver them. So right here, this is what's going to happen, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. God's going to deliver them himself. Hallelujah. This is for somebody. Hallelujah. Praise God. God's going to deliver him himself and, and himself. And this is what he's going to do. And behold, the angel of the Lord. Lord, help my unbelief today, Lord. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined into the prison. You hear that? This is exactly how he's going to do it. The light's going to shine into the prison that he's in. Listen to this. I want you to open up your spiritual eyes. Get rid of the religion. You understand? Open up your spiritual eyes. Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Hold on. And behold, the angel of the Lord. See, Peter was in a place where it looked like he was stuck. Now, check this out. First off, I want to show you how doubtful this situation looked. And when he had apprehended him, see, they took him, put him in prison. And had four quarterings of soldiers to keep him, intending at the Easter to bring forth the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing for the church unto God for him. What happened, though? Prayer was made without ceasing for him, right? Hallelujah. Are y'all praying for these people? Hallelujah. Are y'all praying for these people right now? Are you praying for that person? Prayer was made without ceasing for him, for Peter. You understand? Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you praying for that person without ceasing? Hallelujah. Watch what happened. And when Herod would have brought him the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. He was sleeping between two soldiers. He had no way out. He was, he, he, it was doubtful by the human eye. That means he had all this, this, the, all these enemies surrounding him. It kept him. He had chains upon him. He had chains upon him. He had soldiers all around him, even on both sides of him. He had people all around him. Look at this, brothers and sisters. He was stuck. If you if you don't if you have a religious mind, this is not for you. Hallelujah. You better break that religion off of you today. Hallelujah. Praise God. Watch what happened. This is here for our understanding of how God works. You understand? 
This is prophetic, a prophetic word. And, and, and if you if you receive this, this and you do these things and you believe these things, somebody's going to get released from their prison that they're in with chains. They got soldiers of demons around them. They got soldiers of a, 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 they might be on drugs. They got other drug dealers and drug addicts around them enticing them left and right. They got soldiers all around them guarding them. Uh, 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 soldiers of darkness. Prison, and they're a prisoner in the darkness that they're in because they're lost sheep. They're actually a lost sheep. The other ones are enforcement for the darkness. They're not lost sheep. Some people ain't lost sheep. Some people are just, uh, they're, 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 they're on Satan's team working to keep the sheep lost. But guess what the Lord's going to do? Hallelujah. The Lord's going to go in there. The Lord's going to go in there. You understand? And they're bound with two chains. He was bound with two, now he was bound with two chains. Two soldiers on the side had the had the, 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 the all around in a prison had all this going on. Hallelujah! And behold, at their prayer because prayer was made for them, there was no way out but prayer from somebody else. Intercessory was made from someone else. From other people was made for him. It made sure it said that first. Wake up. Wake up your religious minds today if you have a religious mind. I don't want to offend nobody, but if it offends you, brothers and sisters, I want to tell you today that this is telling you something today. This is prophetic word for somebody. They were praying for this guy that was in a prison. What kind of prison is that person you're praying for in? What kind of prison are they in? Hallelujah. Are they in drug addiction? Are they just lost in the world? Are they stuck in the world somewhere? Are they are they are they in gangs? Are they are they are they are they just in the world and and and, 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 and witchcraft? Are they are they bound by these things around them? Are they around the wrong people? And you know they are deep down inside. You know they're around the wrong people. And you're praying God don't let it. You know that that's not them. That they're that they're actually a lost sheep. They're not there. That that ain't that ain't where they're gonna be at. That's they're gonna get redeemed. The angel of the Lord's gonna go in there and get them out of this place. Because they don't belong there. God knew them from the beginning. You understand? He foreknows those that are his. Everybody they're around might not be God's. But they're lost sheep. And God's going to go get his lost sheep. I'm trying to tell you something today, brothers and sisters. Wake up! What I'm trying to tell you, everybody's not a lost sheep. Just because they're lost. You understand? Some people are. Hallelujah. 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 But praise God, God can deliver them from the uttermost. Remember that. So this is what's going to happen, brothers and sisters. Wake up. And Harar would have brought him forth the same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. The keepers of the door that kept the prison. Now check this out. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him. Who, who delivered him out of this prison? The, 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 the people of the church couldn't deliver him out, could they? Could they? They couldn't go in there and get Peter out of this prison. They couldn't go in there and deliver him out. What did they do, though? They made prayer for him, right? Intercessory for him, right? You see what I'm trying to tell you today? Please, brothers and sisters, wake up. Are you even, are you, are you, are you so busy praying for yourself to get things in this world instead of praying for those that are lost to get them into heaven? Are you trying to save money instead of save souls? What are you trying to do? Did, did you take your affections off of this world and set them on things above? What are you trying to do, brothers and sisters? Hallelujah. I want to ask you that today. Are, are, are you trying to save money or are you trying to save souls? Huh? Which one are you focused more on? You need to wait. You need to find out what you are focused more on, brothers and sisters. I'm trying to tell you something today. Hallelujah. God bless you all. I pray you hear this message today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This, this life ain't but a moment. What are you going to do with your money if you died tomorrow? <laughs> what are you going to do with it? A prayer can continue on even if you passed away tomorrow to save someone else's soul. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. And if hope, love, and faith, God hears you. God hears you. You understand? He hears you, sister. He hears you. And I want you to remember one thing in, in your journey. The man who gathers little will have no lack, but the one who gathers much will have nothing left over. That's going to help you. For some reason, God told me to speak that to you. Sister, I don't know you, but...
but God told me to speak that to you. This is written. And you can try to argue with it all day long, but remember that in your mind. The one who gathers little will have no lack. Don't try to gather a bunch of stuff. Rather be a cheerful giver. You understand? It's more blessed to give than receive. <laughs> that ain't for everybody. That's only for the <laughs> for the true heirs of God. Hallelujah. That's for the true heirs of God. That's for anybody who can receive it as a child of God. Hallelujah. I don't condemn nobody, but I'm telling you the truth. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than receive. Do you want Jesus? Well, that's his words. Hallelujah. The Bible said it is written, him who gathers little will have no lack. But if you gather much, you're going to have nothing left over. Nothing. It says that it's written. It's written. <laughs> it is written. Be more of a cheerful giver than a receiver. Hallelujah. Stop praying to receive for yourself. Pray. To be a blessing to others. Pray for others to be redeemed. Pray for those around you to, that are lost, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyways. And when Harad would have brought him forth, the same night Peter was sleeping between two souls. We're going to go ahead and do this. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him and the light shined in the prison. All right, it went. Who came in the prison? The angel of the Lord did. Not, not, not. The, 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 the Christians couldn't go in there. You know why? Because it was beyond their capability. So it was, it was, it was for the Lord, the angel of the Lord to go in there himself and save them. But how did, but the, but guess what? The Christians still had a duty. What did they do? They prayed. They prayed for Peter. Even though Peter was a Christian, you understand? You know, I'm just giving you a understanding, brothers and sisters. We're not here to be legalistic and, you know, I'm, I'm just trying to give you an understanding, a picture of how God works. He did it in the physical the same way he does it in the spiritual. You understand? He did it in the physical right here the same way he does it in the spiritual. God works the same way. He goes into prisons and he gets people out. You understand? When, when we can't go get them out. We can pray and make intercessory. God can move the mountains. You understand? Hallelujah. All we have to do is pray for them. All we got to do is make intercessory. They pray without ceasing for Peter and the angel of the Lord went in there because the Christians couldn't go in that prison. They couldn't go in there to get them out. Hallelujah. So they just prayed. Hallelujah. And the angel of the Lord came upon him and the light shined in the prison and smote Peter on the side and raised him up. Who raised him up? The angel of the Lord raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly. And what happened? The chains fell off of him. The chains of darkness. This is the same way the, uh, the angel of the Lord works in the spiritual, the same way he's working in the physical right now. He broke the chains off of him in the physical. You understand? That's the same way he does it in the spiritual. He breaks the chains off of his children. You understand? He goes in there and he breaks the chains. He breaks the walls down. He opens up the prison door. He shuts down all the, the prison guards who are guarding for for Satan, hallelujah, he shuts the mouths of the lions, he breaks the chains off of them, look at this brothers and sisters, look at this message today, hallelujah, he's breaking chains, chain breaker, you understand, he's breaking chains today, everything's on time, you hear this right here, brothers and sisters, Woo! hallelujah, I receive it God, I receive it Lord, Yes, Lord, I believe you, Lord. I believe you, Lord. Help my unbelief today, Lord. Help my unbelief now, Lord Jesus. I believe you, Lord. I believe your words is happening right now in the mighty name of Jesus. I be Woo, hallelujah. Yes, Lord. This is right on time, brothers and sisters. I'm trying to tell you something today. I'm trying to tell you something today, brothers and sisters. Please listen to the Lord Jesus today. He's telling us. He's telling me too, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Help my unbelief, Lord. Help my unbelief. I believe, Lord. Yes, Lord. I believe, Lord. I believe. I believe, Lord. I believe it's in your hands, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Look at the shirt. Everything's on time. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's chain breaking season. Woo. He's going into the prison to get them out. He's going in there to get them out, brothers and sisters. I believe, Lord Jesus. I believe, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. Yes, Lord. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Yes, Lord. He's going to get them out. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. We rejoice. You're going to get them out of their prison. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. I believe, Lord. I believe, Lord. Help my unbelief. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yes, Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And what happened? His chains fell off. In Jesus' name, his chains fell off. And the angel said to him, Gird thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. That's what the Lord Jesus said. And he went out and followed him. But I want to show you what happened. Which was done by the angel. But the, but the, but thought he was saw a vision. When they were past the first and the second ward. They came unto the iron gate. Leadeth unto the city. Which openeth to them to his own accord. And they went out and passed on through one street. And forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself. He said, now I know of surety that the Lord has sent his angel and delivered me out of the hand of Herod from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. And when he had considered the thing, he came upon the house of Mary and mother John and surnamed Mark and were gathered together praying. They were gathered together praying for him. Remember, they were praying for him. And what happened? And Peter knocked at the door of the gate of the damsel and came to hearken named Rhoda. And she knew Peter's voice and she opened not the gate for gladness. But ran in and told Peter stood before the gate. And they said unto her thou art mad. But she constantly affirmed that it was even so. They said it was his angel. But Peter continued knocking. And when they had opened the door and saw him they were astonished. But he beckoned unto them with a hand to hold their peace. Declared unto them the Lord had brought him out of this prison. He gave them the, that's what's going to happen brothers and sisters. These people you're praying for. Oh, you're going to be praying for them. They're going to come knocking at your door with a testimony. Ready to tell you about what the Lord, how he delivered them. And you're just going to thank God. You might hit your knees right there before you even hug your child. Before you even hug whoever you're praying for. Whoever it may be. I don't know who it may be you're praying for. But you, you're just going to hit your knees and thank God. When they walk through that door. Giving testifying of how God has delivered them. Testifying how Jesus. Jesus changed their life. Testifying. It's going to be so powerful. It's going to, 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 the anointing that they have on them is going to bless you. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God heard your prayers. Because God's going to go into their prison and deliver them out of that prison of darkness. You understand? Hallelujah. God's going to go into that prison and deliver them. You keep praying for them. And it says why, and you're not even going to believe it. Hallelujah. When they knock on your door, you're like, huh? At first, and then you're just going to keep seeing it. You're going to be like, wow, praise God. I'm trying to tell you something, brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you something. Praise God. I love you, brothers and sisters. I pray that blessed you today. I want you to rejoice that God is delivering that person you've been praying for. He's going to do it. You keep praying for them no matter who they are. You keep praying for them. You keep on praying. You don't stop praying for them. I'm telling you today in Jesus' mighty name that you keep praying for them. You hear me, brothers and sisters? You keep praying for them and thanking God and rejoice knowing that he's going to deliver them. He's going to go himself and get them out of that prison. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb of God. God bless you all. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Love you all, brothers and sisters.